and gathering together in the morning, reflecting on the, the Triple Gem and the Buddha's essential teachings. Consciously setting these, these qualities, these perspectives, the very center of our attention. We bring these up, recollect these, chant these together to help give us a, a fresh framework for our, for our days, for our experience. To see the world, to see our mind, our body with a fresh eye. Reflecting on the, the body, our sitting posture. Bringing attention to the, the balance of energy and relaxation. Making it our habit to find that, that middle, the middle way of balance just in our physical being, finding that balance of alertness, energy, inner brightness, and peacefulness, that mysterious way that the body can be both energetic and alert, yet free from agitation. The more we are able to establish, to find, and to develop that balance in the body, in our physical posture, whether we're sitting, standing, walking, lying down, then the more that supports the finding of that same balance, that same equilibrium in the mental realm as well. finding, developing that dimension of our, of our mental world, that quality of being that is both perfectly alert, bright, energetic, and completely peaceful at the same time. When we consider the factors of enlightenment, the seven Bojanga, Amongst these are virya, energy, dhamma vijaya, investigation of reality, piti, rapture, joy, but also pasadi, tranquility, samadhi, concentration, upeka, equanimity. This means when the heart is completely awake, completely free, it's both totally energized, observant, joyful, and completely peaceful, calm, focused, simultaneously. These qualities don't oppose each other or interrupt each other. Rather, they are the the natural attributes of the mind's fundamental nature when it's free of all obscuration, free of clinging. (coughs) 
Now, when we use this kind of language, speaking about when the mind is free of clinging, we're not talking about some kind of grand event way off in the future. But this moment, this very simple, ordinary, present moment, when the heart lets go, when the, the habits of clinging are momentarily dropped. When a, a thought is recognized and let go of, or an irritation in the body, a feeling of discomfort or the urge to, to cough is something we find ourselves struggling with and then we recognize, oh, this is just the feeling of needing to cough, that's all. In a moment of some simple, ordinary process like that, recognizing, oh, there's a struggling against the way things are, and then there's a letting go of the struggle. Oh, this is just a, a tickle in the throat. This is just a, a feeling in the body. That's all. And in that moment of dropping the struggle, letting go of the, the wish that things were different than the way they are, in that moment of non-contention, openness. Then that uh, craving, tanna has been let go of, abandoned. And if we look, in that very moment, there's a peacefulness, a brightness, a natural simplicity, purity, So when we talk about the Dhamma being realized when, when clinging has been abandoned, it's not like some kind of grand Armageddon at the end of time. It's just this moment when there's an inner relaxation, this ordinary, familiar, unremarkable moment. when there's a, a relaxation, there's a letting go of trying to get hold of what we haven't got, trying to get rid of what we are burdened by. Letting go of an opinion, a feeling, a mood, whether it's liked or disliked or neutral. In this simple, ordinary, familiar moment, when there's a, an absence of grasping, clinging, no longer resenting what's here, that's painful, or chasing after, pursuing what's attractive. In the moment that the heart is free of grasping, There is peace. In a dialogue between Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Ananda, when Ananda asks about this, asks Venerable Sariputta, when your when your mind is completely free of any kind of identification, attachment to the sense world. Is there something that you're aware of? And Sariputta says, yes, indeed. There's an awareness that bhava niroda nibbanang. Bhava nirodho nibbanang. The mind is aware that 
the ending of becoming is Nibbāna, is peacefulness. When that outgoing surge, that outflow stops, here is peace. So again, this isn't just describing some grand event in the life of an arahant two and a half thousand years ago, some special spiritual explosion, some kind of grand satori off some other place in the future. But it's this moment, right now, when the heart relaxes, stops trying to keep hold of the thing that we like, push away the thing that we dislike. But it's open, awake, accepting of the reality of this present. So during the course of today, as we continue to develop the, the practice, spending time, many hours together, whether it's in formal meditation, doing the sitting, walking meditation, or informal times, coming and going between rooms, buildings, brushing our teeth, walking along the corridor, eating our food. Bring attention to these habits of craving and clinging, to notice the moment of attachment, the moment of grasping, the mind caught up, trying to possess something that we like, fixating on an opinion or a judgment, chasing after an imagined future, reminiscing or regretting an imagined past. To notice, this is craving, clinging. Tanna upadana bhava, craving, clinging, becoming, is growing surge of entanglement. Powerful habits of entanglement, identification, the habits of creating me, I think, I want, I regret, I remember, I will. Tana upadana bhava, craving, clinging, becoming. So whether we're doing walking meditation or sitting meditation, whether we are trying to focus upon the footsteps or the breath or endeavoring just to leave the mind in an open, spacious, attentive attitude, developing an open awareness, whatever the circumstance might be, make a, a clear and conscious effort to notice tanha upadana bhava craving clinging becoming like a little flag going up as the heart flows out towards an object the attention flows out gets lost in a a memory an opinion, a judgment, a like or a dislike. Notice that flag going up. Oh, there it goes. The, mount, the mind flowing out to get entangled in its mood. This is called the asava. All these together are called the asava or the outflows. The simple habit of the mind absorbing, getting lost, entangled 
in a dislike or an opinion, a memory, a feeling, a sensation, a sight or a sound, a regret, a hope. To train ourselves to notice, to attend to that outflow, that gushing quality, to know this is what is happening. The mind is getting lost in a mood. And to respond to that by letting go, by stopping the outflow. Feeling that, that outflowing gush and responding with a, an abandonment, a relinquishing. And then when that has been let go of, when that outflow has been stopped, notice how this feels. When a thought or a feeling or a judgment has been let go of, what's the, the tone of our experience? What do we find when the heart is free of that grasping, that surge of, of uh, flowing out? What we find every time this is a quality of peacefulness, stillness, spaciousness, brightness. When the heart is free of grasping, the deathless, timeless quality of the present reality is apparent. The Dhamma is always here, sanditiko akaliko, apparent here and now. Timeless. When that reality of the mind's own nature is not confused by surging out, chasing an object, then it's vividly present, easily discerned, always right here. So when the clinging stops, when there's a freedom from entanglement in tanna, upadana, bhava, then the mind is able to know its own nature. The Dhamma is recognized. Pure, radiant, peaceful. Ever present. So during the day, just Keep bringing attention to this. When there's a moment of letting go, don't just jump ahead to the next thing to be doing. Picking up the next object, the next task. But take a moment to notice. What is the quality of experience? What's here? When tanha, upadana, bhava, have ceased. Let that be fully attended to, let the heart be fully aware, awakened to, that every time, without fail, every time there's a freedom from grasping, what's here is is a stillness, spaciousness, peacefulness, simplicity, a living clarity that is naturally delightful. When we explore the nature of experience, we begin to recognize things of this way, then 
it changes uh, habitual self-view. The basis of our of our reality, the basis of our experience of what is real, rather than the feeling of me being this person, this man, this woman, this good person, bad person, success or failure, rather than the habits of self-view being what defines what is real, what we feel to be who and what we are, the vision shifts, the view shifts. Because over and over again, if what we see when the, when the clouds clear, when the clinging and becoming stops, we see the, the very basis of our nature, the very basis of experience. There's clarity, peacefulness, brightness. It helps to change the view of what is real, what is the foundation of our, of our being, our nature. It's realized that the Dhamma itself is the reality of what we are, what is. You don't have to believe this. You don't have to take this as some kind of declaration by a religious authority. But we can experiment, explore for ourselves. Is this true? Do we find this? What's the reality? So I encourage all of us to take this time we have today, this week, to explore, to see, to know directly, each one of us. When tanha upadana ceases, craving, clinging, becoming, when that outflow of the heart stops, what do we find? What's here? We don't have to create a story about it. We don't have to write a poem about it. Come up with some kind of definitive description. All that is unnecessary, extra. The only important thing is to awaken to that, to know that, to realize that quality directly. Our way of uh, helping to characterize this, uh, one of the great uh, masters of uh, the current age in Thailand, Lumpur Dun, used a way of reformulating the Four Noble Truths to describe this. He said the, the mind going out and getting lost in its moods, this is the cause of dukkha. This is what causes the arising of dukkha. And the experience of the mind being entangled in its moods, that is dukkha. The mind seeing the mind, the mind knowing the mind, is the way the, that uh, the mind frees itself from being entangled in its moods. The mind knowing the mind. And the result of the mind knowing, seeing itself, knowing itself, is the ending of dukkha, dukkha niroda. The mind flowing out and getting entangled in its moods is the cause. The experience of the mind being entangled in its moods is dukkha. The mind seeing the mind the mind seeing its own habits, that's the maga, the path, and the effect of following the path, the effect of the mind seeing its own habits. 
that brings about the ending, the freeing of the heart from dukkha.